Hey everyone, this is Paul, South P24. I'm back with another custom action figure tutorial. This time I'm gonna be showing you how I made this guy. He is a six inch, 112 soft goods Mandalorian as he appears in The Mandalorian and also the book of Boba Fett. The techniques I'm using for this are similar to some of the other customs I've made. You can always check out those videos. So we'll kind of move quickly through, but of course, if you have questions, feel free to hit me up down below or you can always find me on Instagram. So yeah, let's get into it. This is just a reminder when I'm doing these projects, always have good reference photos. One of the key things about doing soft goods in this scale is just to make sure that the clothes are tight to the body and they don't look bulky or saggy or anything like that. One reference that I actually use a lot is the Hot Toys 1-6 scale figures. Not to say that I'm achieving that level of quality, but it's just a really good frame of reference so you can see how all those clothes come together and how everything tucks into the armor. For base figures, I'm using the Mayfex Mandalorian for all the armor and the head and a Drawman 112. For a cheaper option, you can use the Bandai Model Kit or Hasbro Black Series. Soft goods are from GPS slot. It's just a jumpsuit, a long sleeve t-shirt. Uh, and of course you will need to have those in brown. So I recommend something like this, a synthetic dye. If you're using the Mayfex, it's a pretty straightforward boil and pop to take it all apart. You will need to cut the draw man or your base figure at the shins and then dremel out a slot so those will fit into the boots of the May effects and just kind of adjust so you get your desired height. I've shown this before in other videos when I'm doing magnetic jetpacks for Mandos. In this case, I'm putting the magnet directly into the back of the base figure, set that in glue, making sure you've got the magnets facing the right way, and then those will attach perfectly even through the clothes the jetpack should hold. So at this point, you can see I've got a nice breakdown of all the parts that go into this. There is the draw man figure. You'll notice he is cut at the shin, so that's gonna accommodate the height going into the boots. I've got the jumpsuit and the long sleeve t-shirt that have been dyed brown. Uh, you've got the magnet in the back, and that's gonna correspond to the magnet on the back of the jetpack. You can see I've dremeled out the boots, so that's gonna be to my desired height. In this case, I'm using the jetpack from the Black Series. The wrist braces, when heated up, will fit perfectly onto the pegs of the Drawman forearms. And yeah, I think we're ready to start putting them together. If you've seen my Boba Fett tutorial video, I'm using the same technique, which is really about limited sewing. I cut the sleeves off and I'm gonna slide those up over the arms. You can keep those in place with just a, a little bit of glue at the shoulder. And then when you put the jumpsuit over that, it creates the layered look of a long sleeve shirt underneath the short sleeves. Uh, the reason I like this is because whenever you're dealing with soft goods in this scale, if you can make it less bulky, that's always the best. And then the last thing is just to clean up what's really the vest, the remaining t-shirt. And to get that as tight as possible, what I did is cut a slit up the back and then pulled that tight and I just used glue to keep that in place. So absolutely no sewing on this guy. Whether you're using the Mayfex Black Series or a model kit, this stage of the process is gonna be a little bit different. The Mayfex wrist braces will fit perfectly onto the uh, forearm pegs of the Drawman figure, which is fantastic. But if you're using a Black Series, you'd probably need to Dremel something away and then permanently glue it which is what I'm doing here with the boots. I've already mentioned that I had cut the shins and that I've dremeled out the top of the boots and that I've established my desired height of the finished figure really based on a little bit of trial and error and making sure that he's scaling well with other figures in my collection or other customs. So at this point, uh, I've got them all together. Articulation is good and we're ready to start adding some armor. I didn't mention it off the top, but I'm using a custom wired cape rather than the one that came with the Mayfex figure. The most important thing here is to really establish how that's gonna sit on the chest. And a critical thing that I see so many people doing with their custom capes on their Mandalorian figures, it's meant to tuck underneath that uh, top chest plate armor and not just sit loosely over top. So here what I'm doing is just making sure that I'm comfortable with that height and I don't have a situation where that head is just sitting directly on the shoulders and you want to maintain some good articulation with the neck, eventually I can cover up that with a little piece of material so I don't see the skin. It doesn't seem like much, but I was really cautious as I was attaching this top armor piece on the chest. I wanted to make sure that it sat square across the neckline 
that the cape was properly tucked in at the top, and then once that's all established, it was pretty easy to slide in the abdomen piece. For the shoulders, rather than use the Mayfex parts, I went with 3D printed shoulder armor. This way I could get matching parts, but then also get one with the Mudhorn insignia, but it's totally up to you. Uh, it's just a little bit of glue. And then I only attach those to the sleeve and not up at the top of the shoulder. This way it could still have a free range of motion and come up and over. And it definitely hinders some of the articulation by having these armor pieces, but I thought it was the best compromise to glue it at the sleeve. All right, we're down to the last few steps. The belt, just get that warmed up and you should be able to slide it back up and over the shoulder. And then for the neck, I used a piece of scrap material from the pants to slide that over so you don't see any of the exposed skin once you put the helmet on. Don't forget, you can always go over the fabric with some paint if there was any uneven spots or you got glue on the fabric and it left some residue. So paint will just kind of clean that up for you. And here we go, getting that helmet on as the final step. And I'm calling this project finished, my 112 Soft Goods Mezco style Mandalorian. If you've made it this far in the tutorial, thank you so much for sticking with it. I'll leave you with a few toy photography shots of this custom Mando figure, recreating scenes from season three, the latest season that's on Disney Plus now. Uh, and of course, if you decide to make this custom or something similar, be sure to hit me up. You can leave uh, comments or questions down below. And of course, you can always hit me up on Instagram, at Southby24. I love sharing ideas and hearing about different projects people are working on. It's all about building that community and having fun. So thanks again, and I'll see you next time.